Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. The company or friends you keep will determine whether you succeed or not. Okay? So basically, the company you keep has the power to influence or change you. And never forget that a positive influence will teach, will motivate, and brush you up for success. While a negative influence will inspire you to become maybe a bird person or forget your values and your mission and change your good nurture. And so you need to decide right now who your friends are going to be and who are the people that you're going to ditch or who are you going to keep. Now, you might be asking yourself, no, that's not going to be possible. I've known these people all my life. I've dealt with these people ever since. My friends are my friends. Don't touch them. Can anyone do without having friends? Of course not. We are human and human beings are societal creatures. We live, learn, and we need to contribute to others in order for us to make sense of the world around us. And the people that are usually around us are what we then call friends and the people that then have so much of a positive or negative influence uh, to our own success as human uh, beings. Now, we all have our friends. We share ideas with them. We share, um, you know, a drink with them. I share whiskey or two with my friends. We talk together. We have fun. And sometimes you fight with them. You know, not not because you hate them or you don't want to hear from them, but simply because maybe you've had a clash in values and you probably expected them to act better or be better or be a person that they possibly were not. And yes, that's the baseline of any other friendship that I know that has been recorded in human existence. But do you know that aside from you, your friends can determine whether you achieve success or not. Have you ever thought of that? You are where you are just simply predicated on the people that you are hanging out with. I met my wife on a night out with friends. Had my friends steered me towards a different place or a different party, I wouldn't have met my wife. So I am here simply because of the company that I kept at that time. So think of the things that you almost didn't do just simply because maybe a friend thought it wasn't a good idea and you eventually did. And it turned out to be the baseline of your life right now. So there are two things that are involved in friendship, which is the ability to love and the ability to influence and this means that you are either loved by the people around or you are influenced by them what you wear how you talk how you respond to people how you respond to life situations and circumstances i know of people that have had tattoos to signify their friendship you know and maybe some people regret that because now they are no longer friends so how do your friends actually affect the success in your life? Because right now you might have friends that are inviting you to a party or a barbecue and yet you need to be doing something in your business. Maybe you need to be recording a podcast. You need to be recording a video. But your friends are inviting you out and you don't want to be that guy that doesn't show up to events just simply because, you know, you don't want to be boring or be labeled an outcast. How are they one of the biggest deciding factors in your success? Well, let's find out. You, mummy, who is in your actual friendship circle? 
Are these people your clients? Are these people buying from you? Are these people teaching you? Are you listening to their podcasts? Are you reading their books? What if your friends are cheap? that you are learning from or you're using as an anchor point to propel you to be doing have the success that you have defined for yourself what type of friends do you actually keep you know what type of people are they who do you call your best friend cuz there are two different kinds of people there's good friends and then there's bad friends and a lot of people have lost their pathway to success and some have also found the road to success all because of the friends that they keep and the people that they mingle with imagine if your friend was richard branson and tony robbins and maybe you had uh, elon musk and mark zuckerberg in your friendship circle what kind of a person would you be how much money would you have in your bank account just for you to maintain these friendships you know because sometimes we might not push ourselves to achieve a lot because we don't want to upset our friends or the people that are around us you know so you want to analyze who is your best friend and if your best friend is not as motivated or does not aspire for the things that you want or is not motivated you to do something positive if who you call your bestie has never given you positive advice lastly if your best friend has never informed you or advised you maybe on your shortcomings or on what you could improve on then you don't have a best friend you know they have a quote uh, when i was growing up that says birds of the same feather flock together we wanted to sound smart and we'll say um birds of the same fur the parimbolet at close proximity i want to go with the last parimbolet at close proximity who are you at close proximity with because countless or a lot of people have changed from their good nature into a bad one all because of friends and one thing to note is negative people move with a negative energy around them If your best friend is filled with negativity inside out, then you too will surely be affected by this aura. Imagine when you were school kids and you had friends that would go and bully other kids. Even if you saw that thing as wrong, you would eventually start doing it because otherwise you did not want to uh, be taken out of the herd. You know, so many people try to fit in with mediocrity just so that they don't get chucked out of the herd and this eventually influences their success with either positivity or negativity because the friends that you keep can either influence you with positive or negative um you know uh, uh, affiliations because your friends have the power to change the kind of person you are completely Let me just put it out there. If your friend decides to drink and drive and both of you are involved in a car accident and you wreck the car around some pole and you are terminally injured, has that friend not influenced the rest of your life? That's exactly what is happening without the drama of poles and car crashes. our friends are leading us to oblivion and are we actually paying attention to the people that we have around us because the friends that you keep can either influence you to positivity or negativity and they can actually change the kind of person that you are completely that's why a lot of people when they reach their 30s or 40s they start to have midlife crisis because all their activities and all their actions were determined by their friendship circles and when the friends start dwindling they don't know what to do with themselves by themselves and this is how your friends influence you they influence you to directly with what they do they influence you directly by teaching you and giving you advice you know the way you dress right now is it 
pretty much because that's what you want to do or is it because it was cool around about that time? I have a sister-in-law who's got absolutely lovely Kelly hair, but she doesn't wear it Kelly anymore because the friends in her time when she was growing up were straightening her their hair and that's what she does with her hair now. So that now has changed her lifestyle completely because even her kids have never seen her with Kelly hair. And yes, that's how they influence you. It might be small, but there's a lot of things that we're not paying attention to that our friends are influencing us with. For instance, you watch a movie and you like the way the actor walks or talks or whatever it is. The question is, if you truly like the way the actor walks and talks, wouldn't you try to imitate that actor? Of course you will. I know that the way I'm dressing is predicated on the uh, rap artists that we used to see when I was growing up. I used to like uh, Puff Daddy or P. Diddy or Love as he calls himself today. You know, 50 cents or whatever, the way he put his cap on. That's normally how I find myself putting on a cap, even if I'm a grown man. And sometimes you find people wearing um, their pants, you know, uh, drop, drop down just underneath their, their butt. It's because they saw that somewhere and somebody influenced them to act in that certain way. Just the way you imitate that actor or that singer or that person is the same way your 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 friends can influence you with their character. And however, the funny part is they don't have to teach you these things um, for you to like them. You just find yourself imitating and copying them gradually. Monkey see, monkey do. So an important question to ask here is, are you imitating a good friend or a bad one? And if you imitate a good friend, then will you be um, good enough and will that last? Or are you imitating a bad friend and is that going to be your lasting persona? Definitely something is going to happen. You know? So everyone wants to succeed. And a good friend will always teach you, will always enlighten you, will always motivate you for success. And a bad friend will only motivate you to do evil things, you know, like drinking, smoking, fighting, envying, gossip, all of those things that don't bring in any of the positive energy that we want in order to create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And you should know that things like that are the biggest enemy to your success. So if you want these bad elements out of your life, figure out who amongst your friends is um, supporting any of these things and get rid of them. This is the reason why successful people um, leave their loser friends behind. Because we all want to be amazing. We all want to be successful. We all want to be happy. We all want to be regarded as important figures in our fields. We all want to be um, regarded as authorities and people that are successful in whatever it is that they're doing. Right? And I'm sure that you've heard that the keys to success um, basically around the company that you keep the people you surround yourself with those are the people that will determine how far you will be willing to go and how far you will be willing to believe in yourself you become the average of the five people that you spend most of your time with so if you want to be amazing surround yourself with amazing people and this is how you do it you you create a make or break list you see <laughs> <laughs> it's quite funny the reason why I'm saying this you might just say oh yeah it's because you know what you you don't have any friends or you probably have no people that you can rely on which is true which is absolutely true but I do have people and friends that I hang around with and people that I actually share ideas with and people that I um you know have used as an anchor point as to how far I want to take my life to become. You see, I'm the founder of Live Long Digital, where we help small businesses explode in growth using digital marketing strategies. And I'm really passionate about helping coaches and consultants and even small business owners to grow their business because I know what it's like to come from nothing. You know, I was born in Zimbabwe. 
And when we were growing up, life was pretty tough. And we didn't have a lot of money and hope. Can you imagine the, the things that we would have had to do in order for us to, um, you know, um, have money? We would have been engaged in a lot of illegal activities, but I didn't do that, you know? There was no one to really look up to, and we didn't even have a lot of role models that would have inspired us or expanded our, on our horizons. But my life changed when a bright-eyed Australian teacher came to work at my school and she taught me about what Australia was all about and all the incredible opportunities it had to offer. And she taught me that there was a whole other world outside of my small town that I was brought up in. And, and there was a whole world of infinite possibilities for people who dream big and, and the courage to follow their dreams. And for the rest of my time in school, I worked my butt off just to learn as much as I could. And a few years later, I was in Australia. So let me tell you something. You might be around people or there might be people around you that do not see what you see. It's okay to say no and it's okay to outgrow them. Because the company that you keep has the a, a power to influence and change you. Never forget that positive influence can teach you, um, you know, people with positive influence can motivate you and they can brush you up for success because you got to have to level up with them. While if you're being around negative influence, you will, you will not be inspired to become a, a better person. You will actually have your good nature changed and you can't do well if you're not presenting yourself well. So here's my challenge to you. I want you to create a make or break list, right? Because I once had a good friend of mine who told me um, of a man that he knows. Well, basically, I'm trying not to say names here, but this person took themselves from rags to riches because they were living from paycheck to paycheck. All right. And. He decided he was tired of being trapped in his own life. So this poor man looked around at his friends and he noticed that one of them wasn't particularly, um, um, you know, bothered about where they were in life. And one of them was particularly smart and more talented. And he had become quite wealthy. So he asked this man, how did you acquire all this wealth? How did you become a millionaire? And the wealthy man's response was, keep the right company. So this man took this advice to heart and he quickly noticed that, you know, all the other friends that he had hated or he had started to resent didn't like any hard work at all. You know, they just enjoyed drinking and smoking and not doing anything. So he went out and sought out for new friends and he went around conversions, seminars and connected with people who had made something of themselves. People like that are around us everywhere we look, you know, and you can completely replace the people in your network if you decide to make a list. And this list is very simple. You need to have a column of people who will improve your life and a column of people who have been dragging you down. So if someone can improve your life, spend as much time around them as possible. And if somebody's dragging you down, never spend more than five minutes around them. You know, after you follow this make or break list, you will definitely become a millionaire in under two years. Because the things that are breaking you down or bringing you down is the company that you're keeping. And no one ever does it alone. We hear about self-made millionaires and all that stuff. Yeah, that's a little bit selfish. You never make it alone. So maybe the five-minute rule might be a little bit extreme, but there's an important lesson to learn from it. If you surround yourself with positive people who build you up, the sky is a limit. Did you hear the plane that just went past? It's like synchronicity. The sky is a limit. You know, there's an ideal in our, our society that I was just talking about, the self-made man, a man who's able to find success through his own efforts. Now, don't get me wrong. Success does require an immense amount of determination and personal greed. But however, success also depends on the ability for you to connect with people who have already made it. 
I don't know if you've heard of a guy called Ernest uh, Hemingway. So if you're not familiar with Ernest Hemingway, he's one of the greatest American writers of all time. Even a great writer like Hemingway didn't succeed on his own. Because he was working at a newspaper where his boss, a writer named um, Sherwood Anderson, helped him put out his first novel. And Hemingway then connected with other no-name writers like uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald. And Scott Fitzgerald wrote a few books, which I... Oh, I've forgotten some of the names there. And Virginia Woolf and James Joyce. And they now created a community of great writers. So he didn't uh, come at it by himself. So he created a community of great writers that helped to influence his style, his success, and drove him to write you know, every single day and become one of the greatest uh, authors of his generation. I follow a guy called... Um, uh, Seth Gordon, he puts out a blog every single day, which has, um, you know, um, you know, so, so, somewhat influenced me to put out a podcast every single day. If he can write um, a few words every single day, I can speak a few words that I can record every single day. So Hemingway is a testament to the fact that immense talent alone does not equal success. Hussein Bolt had a coach. Everyone that you know has a coach or somebody who motivates them to be, do, and have a happier existence. And it's very hard to do it by yourself, especially if there's discipline involved or a strict schedule for you to perfect your craft. Or maybe put out a podcast like this by yourself. If I didn't have a team um, that was hungry to edit it up and, and, and put it out there. So you need to have your network of five key people that you uh, keep around you and, you know, that will determine the way you think, the way you act, and the way you approach your life goals. So you need these essential people around you. And um, I once had a mentor who told me that no matter how many uh, people you're close to, um, you know, in your network or your circle, if you want to be truly great, you must have three essential people in your life at all times. And these people are a person who is older and more successful than you that you can learn from. And then two, you need a person who is equal to you that you can exchange ideas with. And then you need a person who is below you that you, can keep, you that you can coach and keeps reminding you, um, you know, of the things that you've learned already. All right. So that's why I keep the statement, you need to leave, to learn and to contribute. All right to leave that's the person who's equal to you that you exchange ideas with and you run with them and perfect your life to learn you that's the person who's older than you and who's more successful um that you actually uh learn from and contribute is the person that you coach or mentor so that you keep reminding yourself of what you've learned you know even great people in history, like I've mentioned before, Aristotle was one of the greatest minds to ever grace a beautiful earth. But he was only because he had a coach. He learned from his mentor, Plato. And he also was a coach to some kid called Alexander who later became known as Alexander the Great. So every great person was and is or, or will be successful just because of the company that they keep. And they'll make an impact because of a successful network of driven peers who then provide inspiration and healthy competition. Surround yourself with people that are only going to lift you higher. So if you want to be remarkable, you must constantly challenge yourself and surround yourself with remarkable people. So you think about, um, you know, your goals and you keep pushing yourself forward. All right. So think about this. Are you going to need a make or break list? Or do you have the kind of people who are going to lead you uh, to live the life of your dreams? Because you don't want to join the easy crowd. 
Go where expectations and the demands to perform and achieve are actually high. That way you can be, do, and have a happier existence. I didn't arrive where I am just by waking up. I threw myself in this new line of work by reading um, everything that I could on digital marketing. I now read a minimum four hours a day, and that's the reason why I'm able to just sit here for 30 minutes and speak into the microphone and create an episode. You know? At the end of the day, if you put put it all together, you are the average of the five people that you hang around with. You know, if you're not doing anything to create a bigger circle, what you have is a cage, my friend. And if you want to be amazing, surround yourself with amazing people. Subscribe to this podcast because we're always giving information like this each and every single day just so that you don't miss out on greatness. You know, whatever you're going to do, keep the right company. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the live long digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level www.community.livelongdigital.com.au